Welcome back to another episode of the Drone1K podcast. We're on season six, episode three. And today we're speaking with Jeff Hughes of Campfire Video Solutions. Some things I really enjoyed about this episode with Jeff is specifically how he went from doing free work for portfolio building into paid jobs and how that transition happened. And a really cool story he has about how some of that free work ended up landing him a big gig with some home builders. So I'm excited to give you this interview. Hope you are inspired and learn a lot. Let's chat with Jeff. All right, welcome back to Drone to 1K. I'm here with Jeff Hughes of Campfire Video Solutions. Thanks for coming on the podcast today, Jeff. Yeah, thanks for having me. Excited to be here. If you're watching this on video, you're going to notice that Jeff has a very crispy video image because he's using a nice uh, DSLR camera for his webcam. So hope everybody appreciates that one. But um, Jeff, why don't you start off by just letting people know just real quick who you are about yourself little quick intro to your business. So as David said, I'm Jeff Hughes with Campfire Video Solutions. I'm the only person in my business, the owner operator. I do corporate video, do a lot of drone work, and I'm based out of Indianapolis, Indiana area. Cool. Awesome. Now let's take it back to the beginning. Maybe we can just do kind of the video production in general since you are encompassing drones in, in I'm assuming you're just using a drone as a tool inside of your kind of video production company. Is that is that a correct assumption? Yeah, I would say it's a pretty good split. I do a lot of just corporate video work where I incorporate drones as much as possible. And then I do some projects that are just completely drone only. So, okay. Okay, sweet. Which one did you get into first, like drones or video production stuff? I always was kind of into video stuff just as, as I was growing up, just kind of for fun and then kind of got away from it a little bit. And my most recent job that I had, I was a marketing director for a small just home inspection company. And with that, we were doing a lot of promotional videos just to kind of promote the business. And so I kind of got back into doing video a lot. And then I was at a friend's house one day and he had a Mavic, I think it was the original Mavic drone. And I was playing around with that a little bit. And I was like, oh, this is, this is really cool. I'm really into this. So I kind of had decided, it was like the middle of 2020, early 2020, right in the middle of the pandemic. I was like, you know, I really think I've, be fun to do a side hustle, just have something to do outside of my normal day-to-day -day work. And with the home inspection company, my primary job was to make relationships with real estate agents. That's how home inspection companies get majority of their business. So I kind of had that in the back of my mind. I was like, you know, maybe I could get into doing some real estate photography. I mean, I could get a drone and kind of add that in. I already had the camera set up and kind of everything I needed for it. And so I started just going into doing all the research for, you know, what does it take to, to, to fly a drone and kind of get that licensing and everything. So got that and just kind of started doing it as a little bit of a side hustle with, with some friends that I had that were real estate agents. So that's, that's kind of how I got into it. So when you were doing work for them as real estate agents, like doing the video, like were you doing video, photo stuff? I'm assuming it was for like the listings. Exactly. Yeah. So I was doing photos, videos, and then um, drone photos and videos wherever it made sense for them. I would say at first I, I didn't even do it paid. It was just all free work at first because I just wanted to kind of learn how to how to fly the drone, how to kind of get into it before I started charging people. So I spent quite a quite a bit of time in 2020 just doing kind of free projects and just practicing basically. Cool. Now with your, you know, as the marketing person for the home inspection company, were you having used a lot of video and photos for that stuff? Did that job set you up nicely for, for moving into this or was it kind of not as related? It did. I was a kind of a one man marketing department. So it was a lot of, it was sales and marketing. I was out, you know, making relationships with real estate agents, you know, going to lunches and events and networking, but then also doing all the back end stuff, promoting them on social media and creating the videos. And so it's kind of all of that all in one. Gotcha. So started off doing stuff for real estate agents. Now are you doing it full time? Basically, it sounds I mean, Campfire Video Solutions is at a full time gig for you now? Yeah. So starting out, like I said, the goal was to, to do real estate photography. That was what I thought it was going to be. And then in 2021, I did a lot of real estate work. I did some for real estate agents that I knew. And then I did some for um, Home Jab, if you're familiar with that app. It's just mm -hmm. kind of one of those gig apps where you can pick up gigs yep. that way. So I think I did like 30 projects that year, mostly were real estate. And then I kind of started getting into doing some corporate video and uh -huh. quickly realized there was a lot of money in that. And it was a lot of fun. I enjoyed working with other small businesses. And so I kind of slowly started transitioning out of doing as much real estate. 2022, I did a lot more corporate work and more drone work, drone specific work. And so that it kind of transitioned out of the real estate stuff, but I still do occasionally, but it's yeah. mostly now corporate video and drone work. 2020 kind of started getting into it. 
What did you get as your first drone? So I got an Autel Evo 1. That was my first drone. Um, I had, I'd watched some stuff about kind of the DJI, like drone blocking you out of places. So like, I don't want anything yeah. to do with that. I'll, I'll just get an <laughs> Autel drone. And it was a great drone. I think I got it used for like 700 bucks. And so okay. the good starter drone, I actually ended up upgrading to the Evo 2 later when that came out, just for a little bit more capability with that one. I've used that one for the last couple of years as my my main drone. I actually just got a Mavic 3 Classic just for some okay. of the software capabilities with that one. But I've used that Autel drone forever, so it's, it's been great. Well, this is good then because, you know, most people are just always DJI everything. You can you hear a couple people get Autel drones. Now you used you've used both of them. Yeah. What, give us a quick breakdown on pros and cons of each of them as as you've seen it and as you've used it. Yeah, so just actually yesterday I was do, doing a job with the Mavic and I got locked out for the first time. So I had to go through that process of trying to figure out how to unlock the zone, everything I was, you know, being where I am, I'm right next to the Indianapolis International Airport. And so okay. there's a lot of a lot of logistics there around me. So that was a first. So that that's probably been the biggest downside is having to kind of think through that extra step, but the waypoints and a lot of what I'm doing on the drone only projects is like time lapse for construction. So okay, the capabilities of that are just way better than the Autel software, being able to mm -hmm. just walk out to a site, put the drone in the air, run the job and it's done. With the Autel, it's a little bit more of a manual process. So I would say that's a big difference, but the Autel has a great camera. It's the, I have the Evo Pro and uh, it's excellent, excellent camera. Sweet. So if you could only buy one drone and it was the uh, DJI or Autel, which one would you which one would you go with? At this point, I would probably go with the the DJI just for the software capabilities. But I, yeah. I almost wish the the camera I could pull the camera off the Autel and put it on the the DJI drone. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah like, all all right. of them have great cameras. It's just you know it's nitpicking at that point. But yeah, yeah, yeah. okay, cool. Well, good breakdown. I was always. You know, you always get people who are, you know, want to know people's opinions and want to know the difference and stuff. All right. So let's go back. So you got your, you got an Autel when you first started getting into it, when you were going to do these real estate jobs, did you get a ground camera as well? Or did you already have like a camera you could use for the interior stuff? Yeah. So I had started kind of, that was the drone thing kind of was a, an afterthought, honestly, with the side hustle, I had an Sony a6400, you know, small a camera and then a gimbal and kind of started gathering that equipment to be able to do real estate photos and videos. And then once I got the drone to add into that, kind of had the full kit for real estate. I was kind of doing a little bit of both. How much is that Sony camera cost? I think it was around a thousand dollars at the time. Okay. So it's been out for a few years now, but. So you're getting out, was that like with the lens and everything? I'm just kind of estimating your startup equipment costs. Yeah. Um, I would imagine, I think it was maybe around with the lens and kind of all that stuff, probably 1500 or so, maybe a okay. little more. Than that. So you're like, give or take tw two grand, 2,500 on gear getting into yeah. Yeah. drone. Okay, cool. So as you started off, you know, you're doing some stuff for friends, getting practice. Did you have a certain point where you're like, all right, I feel good enough. I'm going to go try to get some paid business now, or did that just kind of fall into your lap? Or how did the transition go from like just doing free work to getting a paid job? Yeah. So actually I got a, a paid job in uh, the very end of 2020 in December. That was my very first paid one. It was just through a friend uh, that I, that worked for a company that they needed a, a quick video made and he knew that I was kind of starting to get into it. So I did a really small project there. And then in 2021, I continued doing free work and that I know a lot of people don't say you shouldn't do free work, you know, but I, it was a great way to get some experience and to have something to show, you know, if people want to be yeah. able, if you're trying to explain what you're going to do for somebody, especially with drones, a lot of people still aren't familiar with kind of what, what can be done with that. So having those videos to be able to show somebody really made a big difference. So one of the biggest ones I did, there was an, a new neighborhood going in across the street from my neighborhood and I walked into the, the sales office and there was a, a person in there and I just offered like, hey, do you care if I, I fly my drone over your new development that you're building just to kind of get some experience? I just want to create a video and I'll, I'll give it to you at the end. You can kind of check it out. She was like, yeah, go for it, whatever. So I, I just kind of did a little flyover video of their new neighborhood they were building and she loved it. And then a couple of weeks later, I got a, an email from her boss and they were wanting a bunch more of that kind of work for, they have, they're a huge home builder. And so that... I think that one project turned into like seven thousand dollars worth of work. You know, just awesome. doing it for free. So yeah, that's um, awesome. 
Yeah. So I've, I have several examples like that of, of just offering to do something for free and it turning into to pretty big projects. So that's great. I don't know if you've ever heard this guy. He's not nothing to do with drones. He's like a marketing, old internet marketing guy. His name's Frank Kern. But he always jokes around about like, oh yeah, he's the oldest trick in the book. Show him you can help him by actually helping him. Like <laughs> kind of just, if you start by actually helping someone or like so yeah. they can see what you do, like, oh, wow, this is really good. Um, then they're much more likely to become a customer. So yeah. Um, and, and you may get burned a few times doing that where you do something for free and you never get anything out of it. But I always yeah. try to take something from those, even something you learn or just use it as your reel for the next, next person right. to show. So. Right. I think like you're saying, you can't do it with the only benefit being, I hope this person turns into a paying customer, right? Like if you're, you're going out there saying, Hey, can I do this to practice a little bit, get some good stuff for my demo reel, all that. So even if they never call you for a job, it's still beneficial to you, you know, unless you're at a point where your reel is so stacked and you already have clients calling you like, then, you know, why would you do free work at that point? But I think that's awesome. I think it's good for people to hear and encouraging too, because sometimes people might be like, Oh, I'm not going to go, I'm not going to bother doing that because it's not going to go anywhere right like you never know what's gonna what's gonna hit you know yeah all right so that's your paid job with a friend and then you transitioned so how how far after was that one you talked about with like the home builder where you're kind of flying over their community for free i think you said the first one was like december 2020 yep. just in the timeline here where are we like spring of 2021 so okay okay cool yeah they were yeah it was kind of turning into spring i, st I started going out and that was one thing i did too is Anything that was happening in my local area, like um, Indianapolis hosts the Final Four every once in a while. Mm -hmm. And so they they printed a giant Final Four bracket on a hotel in downtown Indianapolis. And I just went and flew my drone and got footage of that. And um, so any of those kind of things that you can use, I didn't get paid to do that, but it looked great on a reel and I could show it to other people. And, and I was doing that all throughout 2021. Mm -hmm. And then I got one of my wife's former coworkers on Facebook. Uh, she worked for a new company. She it put out there that she was looking for somebody to take drone photos. And so my wife reached out to her and said, Hey, my husband is kind of doing that. You know, he'd love to, to do it. And it was for a local uh, pool construction company. It was like 300 bucks, $400 job for to, to shoot a couple of their pools. But then that one, again, that was a really simple, small job. But that one, I actually ended up doing a huge project with them over the course of an entire year. Um, and it was like an $18,000 job. So that, that was really, your first thing that? Yes. Yeah. Wow. Talk so about they, that. What did that it consist of? Basically, once they kind of saw some of the, the work that I was able to do with the drone, I had a meeting with their vice president after he saw it. And he's like, I want to do a ton of video work over the next year. It's been on our mind to do it. It hasn't been a priority, but you know, I saw what you did. Let's, let's talk. So we sat down and made a plan to make a ton of videos over the next year. And it was, I still do work for him, but that, that was really what kind of catapulted me into being able to, to go full time, uh, with this business. And awesome. So I always look back to that and like, you know, it was a really simple job and it was really, I didn't, you know, I made three or 400 bucks on that first one, but it, it led into a lot of other stuff too. So that's awesome. When I hear stories like this, it's always like, you ever play Minesweeper, the game, you yeah. know, like the old, like, you, you know, like you're clicking around, right? Sometimes you click a bolt block and it's like one opens up, but occasionally you click one all of a sudden it's like, boom, like half the board opens up. I just feel like that's how it happens for so many people that I talk to. This was just a $200 job or this is right. you know, you're doing a free work. But like, if you don't ever like click on those tiles and figure it out and like kind of get out there, there's like one of those is going to open up pretty big eventually oh, yeah. you know and i always say too like be open to to different types of jobs or to just doing a lot of different things like there was one that a lady reached out to me and she was a private investigator and she needed somebody to fly a drone over a site where somebody they thought somebody was dumping something illegal on the job site and i just need somebody to yeah. fly a drone over it and so like i've done all kinds of weird stuff That's like cool. that dude, but just because you know, you're open to it so do you like paint camouflage on your face and kind of on the trees and yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah that's awesome sweet so that for that and and think about that pool company too like i don't know what that sales conversation went like but i know pools you know at least, i don't know in florida at least pools are pretty popular project these companies make pretty good money on these pools margin wise yeah um, i got a quote to get a pool put in at my house it I, we didn't actually do it but the quote i mean it wasn't even that anything that's super crazy but dude pools got so expensive to put in just because everybody oh, yeah. especially after COVID, everybody's just like, I want to be outside. We'll put a pool in. 
dude, we got a quote for, I mean, and this is a small pool, like five feet at one end, maybe like 20 feet across, 25 feet across, like a, like a hangout pool. The quote was six figures plus. It was like a hundred and thousand dollars or something like for just like pretty simple. I mean, there's a few things on it that were like kind of cool that you could have taken off, but it wouldn't have changed the price drastically. I I thought at least around here, there used to be like 40 grand if you were going to get one put in 50. Yeah. It's going up crazy. I mean, I know construction materials have gone up and labor's Mm -hmm. probably gone up. So for them thinking we're paying you 18 grand, if we land one, maybe two more pools in a year because of this stuff, like we're in, we're in the profit on this project, you know? Oh yeah. And they're, and at least around here, they're competitive too. They have, you know, they're, there's only so many, I mean, I live in Indiana that the pool season is a lot smaller than Florida. So they're all trying to get as many pools done in the summer as they can. And so it's, it's competitive. So anything they can do to set themselves apart too is yeah. important for them. Yeah. No, that's awesome. So if you go back a, l- a little bit now, so when you were doing real estate jobs, talk to me a little bit about that. Like how long did you do that for? Did you do that many of them or did that kind of fade away pretty quickly? Yeah, that was in 2021. I was doing a lot of those. I think I did 30 projects total in 2021. Okay. I think 22 of those were real estate. So I was okay. pretty real estate heavy, but that's when I kind of started transitioning into doing a little bit of corporate towards the end of that year. Once I got a taste of that, I was like, this is, this is more my this bread is, and butter. So. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, you find, you kind of find that people will start trying stuff out and they'll find something that they're like, oh, I really enjoy this yeah. setting or this type of work. Well, for the real estate job, just to give people an idea, what were you charging for that kind of work up there? I think with everything like video, drone, and photos, somewhere around like $400. That was kind of all in for all those. The home jab ones that I was doing are a lot less than that, but obviously there's no editing or anything. You just kind of show up, shoot it, and send the footage oh. off. And then, so those are, you know, 80 to to $100 probably. But the ones I was actually booking myself were a little bit higher. What was it about corporate jobs, corporate video versus real estate that you thought you would enjoy the corporate video stuff better? I think with the corporate stuff, so the reason why my business is Campfire Video Pollution, so it, I, I like the idea of storytelling and helping small businesses tell their story. And so my dad is a business owner. Uh, so I kind of grew up with that as a part of me. And once I kind of got into where I was like, helping other local businesses tell their story and get their service out there to more people, if there was a lot of purpose behind that. And so, um, and it's just a lot of fun. It, you know, you kind of feel like you're part of their team for a short time while you're helping them create all these videos and, and get their word out there. So real estate is, it's great. It's, it's more of just kind of turn and burn. You know, you do them, they listing, goes up, the house sells and it's gone forever. That makes sense. Makes sense. What did your dad, what kind of business did your dad have? Uh, he has an electrical business. He's, he's been in oh, business nice. for almost 40 years. So electricians, at least around here, they do well because there's a yeah. lot of work, you know, people are building stuff all the time. Corporate, you know, you moved to the corporate video. How did you get your first corporate video job? Did they just kind of come to you or did you kind of actively seek that out or? Yeah. You know, it was just, despite my background in sales and marketing, I am not really an extrovert. I don't love going out and doing networking, but I have kind of had to force myself over the years to, to learn how to do that with my job with the home inspection company. That was all I did was networking. And so it kind of had that skill set a little bit. And I find that the more you just put out there what you're trying to do and that you exist as a business or as a service, people will just find you. And, you know, it's stupid, but they can't hire you if they don't know you exist. I would just talk about it a lot with people that I knew and everything has kind of grown organically from just my personal network of people that I've known through work or just through family. Yeah. Yeah, just started talking about it and people are like, oh, you know, my, my business could use that, you know, let's talk. So that's awesome. Yeah. Honestly, I'll, that's one of my favorite. It's like so simple. It might sound dumb to say, but it's so true. It's just like, how can you let more people know that you exist? Maybe somebody hears about you once or something, you know, but yeah. like uh, if they don't ever see you again, like they might not think about it. But like if you can find a way to come up in people's minds more often, a lot of times all people need is like a trigger to be like, oh yeah, that's right. I heard about Jeff. I should call him, you know what I mean? Yeah. Or you send him an, you know, an email that goes out about something else. They're like, oh, you know what? I've been meaning to talk to you about this. Sometimes people just need to be reminded that you yep. exist to do business with you. So I think that's such an important point that seems simple, like you said, but is pretty crucial. So what was your first actual corporate job? Yeah, I had a, just a really small corporate job. It was a, a new employee video. They just wanted to make a video to show this person was new to their company. 
So it was a really okay. small thing. Um, that was kind of a one and done for them. Did they find you? Yeah, that well, that one was through my network, just talking to somebody and he was like, oh, we actually need a video made. So why don't you come and do that for us? And he's like, what do you, what, what do you charge? I'm like, uh, let me figure that out. <laughs> And that's, that was honestly the most you're willing to pay. Yeah. (laughs) Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's a hard thing to figure out when you're first starting is, you know, how much do you charge and what, how do you figure out your pricing? And that's one thing I've tried to try to do is be, always want to be consistent. You know, some people will say you should price every job based on who the client is or what they're going to, you know, what they're going to make off of it. And I just find that my network is too small to where, like, if I do a job for one person and charge a thousand dollars and then they refer somebody else to me and I charge them 3000, you know, they're going to talk at some point. So. I just kind of came up with some pricing that I felt good about and and that tested a few times with pitching to people. And it's like, okay, that that works. And slowly raise it over time just to kind of keep up with inflation and things. But that was one yeah. thing that supported me from the beginning is try to try to come up with pricing and just be consistent. So that's a topic a lot of people love hearing others' opinions on pricing. Yeah. So when that person asked you for pricing that first time, how did you think through that? Or what was your kind of thought process on coming to pricing? I had no clue. I was like, I'm just going to throw out a number. I, I threw out like $300 and they were like, yep, yeah. sounds good. I have no idea if that was what they were expecting or not expecting, but it was just a trial and error at the beginning for sure. And then as you thought through a little bit more consistent pricing method, what did you think about and kind of what did you land on for your pricing? Yeah, well, it totally depends on what I'm doing. I mean, if it's drone only stuff, I'm typically, if I'm showing up to a site and um, just getting photos and, and video clips. I charge 300 typically, but a lot of the work that I'm doing now is time-lapse stuff where it's multiple visits to a site. So if I'm doing that and they're kind of buying that package ahead of time, I'll apply a discount across the whole project. So they may be paying a little bit less than 300 per visit. You think you like added up like 300 per visit and then give them some type of discount for doing it all? Exactly. Yeah. And okay. the complexity of editing can charge for editing at the end too. If they want to create some different stuff with the footage at the end, but that's okay. kind of how I do the drone only stuff. But like the corporate work, you know, I kind of made myself a little Excel spreadsheet and based on the parameters that they give me for the project, I can kind of just punch it in and and I just kind of assigned values to those things. And then I just present them a final project price. And, you know, if they got to the point where it's like, they're either going to go for it or they're not. And I just can't keep having conversations where I'm trying to, you know, lower my price and work with them. If they want to do it, they'll do it. And if not, I move on to the next one. I feel like it puts you in a little bit more of a authoritative position too. When you're like that, you're like, Hey, here's you know, here's what we charge and you're confident about it. it makes it things like oh this guy's thought through this he does this you can kind of tell when you're talking to someone if it's like oh there's definitely room for negotiation because they're just pulling this out of their butt or oh this is what they charge and if i say no they're just going to say hey no problem you know hope you find someone that fits your budget see you later and if they really want you then they're going to be like oh well you know they'll figure out how to make it i'm curious in your kind of spreadsheet that you use what kind of things do you think about like what kind of factors are in there for your as you're thinking through the pricing like what what are the elements for corporate work it could be so if it's like a sit down interview that's a totally different setup than if i'm just showing up and with a camera on a gimbal and filming something or just showing up with a drone so interview full setup with lights and microphones and all that so i'll you know, how many hours I'm going to be there. If it's just like a, you know, two or three hour thing, or if it's a full day, if it's multiple days, if I'm doing drone as a part of it, that's an add on the final edit, you know, how many different versions of the video we're going to end up making or different things that will make out of that shoot. That's kind of how I break it down. And and having a spreadsheet like that helps me be consistent because I'm trying not to come up with it off the fly. Every time he says, here's what the project is. I'll kind of ask him the questions I need to ask. And I'll just plug it into the, the spreadsheet and whatever the number is, that's the number. Well, and it then, helps you too, make sure you're not losing money too. Cause let's say someone just say, oh, can we do all this stuff? And you're like, yeah, yeah, sure. And you throw out a number and then you realize, oh crap, this is like way more work than I thought, or I need to hire this person to help me, you know? Oh yeah. And that's one of the things I feel like has gotten me some of those jobs that, you know, are, are on the bigger kind of the bigger end. I think professionalism is one of the the key things that can set you apart from whether it's just drone work or it's corporate video work. You know, professionalism from start to finish really makes people feel like, okay, I'm I'm investing money into this company. He knows what he's doing and he's gonna deliver on this and then they feel a bit more warm and fuzzy about the price that they're paying if if you're professional from start to finish so like from the very beginning i created a website i operate everything under a brand so it's not just my name it's the company i think half the people i work for don't even know that it's just me i think i think it's a bigger company but that's just kind of the way i present there and what i've 
kind of come to realize is that a lot of companies like to hire other companies to do video work. They're not hiring a person, they're hiring another company. I have the website, my proposals are very, I try to make everything as professional as possible. I use HoneyBook to create proposals and I always customize everything with their logos and their colors. And then a lot of times I'll actually send a video message when I send a proposal over. So I'll kind of walk them through how to go through the proposal so they're not confused Smart. when they get it. And it just yeah. adds another opportunity for me to be face to face with them. And I've had a yeah. ton of people say, man, video message really kind of set you apart and really made us excited to work with you. So, so those way to kind of make, yeah, it's almost like the first time they see it, you're able to kind of explain different things or kind of emphasize the value of certain pieces or whatever, make sure they're not confused. Yeah. Cause I can't tell you how many times at the beginning I would work on this email proposal. I'm going to send it off. And then you just hear nothing. And it's like weeks, weeks and we're following up and it's like, did they actually read it? Did I, you know, but with some of the software you can use where you send a video, you can see if they opened it, you can see if they watched the video. So you at least know that they actually saw it and yeah. maybe they still don't respond, but a lot of times they do because they're a little bit more engaged at that point. So, yeah. And I feel like it, it triggers a little bit of like reciprocity too, where it's like, oh, this guy sent me a video message and is waiting for me to respond. I feel like sometimes it's easier to ignore an email where, you know, yes. versus a video message. When I'm doing like cold emailing or I'll send somebody a video message in that too. And sometimes I'll even send like a video example so they can just click right on it in the video and see. Because it's just, nice. that's the great thing about video is you can explain something so much better than just trying to type it out and, and read it. So Well, if someone's reading something too, they typically just scan through it. They're not going to like usually mm -hmm. read the whole thing, but if it's a video... Typically, they're not going to just like jump to the middle of your video. They'll right. like watch, you know, watch it on like two times speed or something, but they're not going to like, all right, if, if you get a proposal, what are you doing? You're going, all right, where's the pricing page? You know, you're just like flipping to the end, right? You're skipping over everything else that person worked on, but video, oh, yeah. at least they're probably watching it through. Yeah, I try to carry that professionalism to the job too. So like I had some shirts made up with my logo and stuff. So I'll wear those. And like when I was, especially when doing real estate, I bought at the hardware store, I bought some of those like booty things you can slip over your shoes. So just little nice. things like that that don't seem like big things, but to the client, they're huge. And just those extra little things that just show that you're taking it seriously and they feel comfortable oh, yeah. giving, yeah. giving them your money. <laughs> Man, I love that. I love that. Well, I want to also touch on some of the drone only work. You talk about you're working for some construction companies and doing time lapses and things like that. How did you first get into that? Yeah, so that just kind of came out of talking with uh, one of them was the the home builder. I think that's kind of where I first started doing a lot of that kind of stuff as they're building houses. They, you know, wanted to get some shots of them. That work just kind of carried on. And then I've done some recently where I, I got in with a, a local builder here and he just does remodels. So he was just somebody, I actually met him at the gym and just started talking to him. And he always wore his shirts for his construction company. And so we just started talking one day and he's like, man, I've really been thinking about doing some video. We do projects all the time and we don't have anything to show. We take photos sometimes, but we don't have anything that really shows off our projects. And so yeah, he and I started working together. I've done tons of projects for him now. So like before and after kind of stuff. But then some of the drone only stuff that I've done recently, there's an excavating company that a friend of mine was a referral from them and talked to him and he does lake dredging. If you're familiar with that, basically cleaning out lakes. He wanted to get just some footage of that because again, there's a lot of people that are running businesses and they're doing really well. But when it comes to showing somebody what they do, they don't have anything to show. And, and they're so busy doing the work that they don't stop to take a video or take photos sometimes. So for him, kind of like the pool contract that you were saying, if he can land one new lake project, that's that makes his whole year. So that one it has been drone only work for him. I, I'll go out when he's out on the lake cleaning it out and just take drone clips and, and pictures. And that way he can post those on social media. And I try to make everything as social media ready as possible and website ready. So when I deliver it to him, he doesn't have to do a lot of work to get it posted. And then another one that's been a really good one for me this year came from a networking group that I started going to and just talked to a guy. And that one's actually a two year project. So I'll go out to this site once every month or six weeks for two years and it's, they were flattened a building and then it's going to be a, you know, five story kind of mixed use construction, but he's only one small part of the construction process. They're, they're like an environmental cleanup company. And so he wanted to have me go out and get footage of the site kind of before they started doing their work, kind of just to document what they were doing and then the rest of the way, I'm going to be just doing a time lapse, just go out and fly the same path every time. And then they, he kind of wants to deliver that to the client as a gift at the very end. Okay. So cool. he, his, his company's work is done 
you know, after I think they're already done now, six or eight weeks. And then yeah. the rest of it is just, I'm just going out to capture the construction. So using it for some marketing help for himself. Cool. I yeah. like it. Yeah. Now we already talked about pricing on those. Typically you said you're charging, I don't know, three or 400 bucks per visit and then discount yep. it if they're buying a ton of it. Like with the construction stuff, do you find that you're dealing more with like the subcontractors on, I mean, I guess you said you get the home remodel guy and he owns his own business. But yeah. do you find your it's more like smaller projects where it's like you're dealing with the head person in charge or are they like these big construction jobs like the one you mentioned at the end? It seems every one of them is a little bit different because there's, you know, just different things involved. But on occasion, it's been the person like in charge of the whole project. A lot of times, though, it's it's a sales or marketing person at the company that they know the value of having this footage and these photos and stuff, and they want to use it for their own purposes, for marketing purposes. So that's where I tend to talk with those people rather than like the construction superintendent or, you know, the person in charge yeah. of the company. A lot of times it's the marketing person that's kind of the way yeah. to those, but. Yeah. Okay. And then you mentioned you were using for some of those, like the DJI drone because of the software there. You don't, so you use that and not like any third party software like Litchi or something like that for your waypoint, you know, getting no. the same shot after the progression. Yeah. I'm just using the, the DJI, just the waypoints. This kind of fall and winter, that's kind of my off season kind of project is to get into essentially more of the mapping and stuff. I'm definitely going to check out the course that you guys have because I think that could be something to maybe implement next year. But oh, yeah, for now, it's all just kind of the time lapse stuff. Well, if you're already working with the construction companies, if you learn how to do some of the ortho mosaic stuff, you know, it gives you kind of an extra layer potentially to add on to it. Yeah. And that's one thing talking with the environmental company, he was saying that that could be huge for them. I just brought it up to him one day. He's like, oh yeah, we could definitely utilize that because they have to show what they're doing and they have to go back out to sites and retest things and to have footage of that would be good for them. Yeah. Awesome. Cool. Well, I don't want to take, take up too much more of your time, but really appreciate you coming on and sharing your story with us. Love hearing about it and getting your history and advice and all that stuff. So I'm sure people got a lot out of this as well. Just appreciate you coming on. No, thanks for having me. This, this podcast has been a huge inspiration for me too. And it's always nice to oh, yeah. hear other people's stories too. So I've always been a big fan of the podcast for sure. Yeah. Man. Well, I'm glad. I'm glad. I just feel like it's one of the best ways if you're getting into something, just hearing from as many people as possible who are having some kind of success, like how they did it or approaches they take or whatever. It's not like you're going to do the exact same thing, but at least maybe can give you one new idea or at least kind of sometimes help keep you going to be like, oh no, I can't make this work, stuff like that. So I'm glad you enjoyed it. I'm glad you're on here now too. So if people want to check out your stuff, are you active on any specific like social media channel or where should people go? My website is campfirevideos.com. Put a lot of stuff on there. And then really I'm mostly active on Facebook. I want to get more active on the other social media channels. That's another on the to-do list, but .com slash campfire videos. That's where everything yeah. I I do is on there. So honestly, I mean, you say you want to get more active on the other ones. I've found people who I know are the most successful are usually like focused on one thing, Facebook or YouTube or whatever, because then you can just like put a ton of effort into that one thing and, and make it yeah. really good to where you can make it successful. So yeah, that's, that's where my network is. It's a lot of companies are on there that I work with. So it, it would make sense, but yeah, that makes sense. Cool. All right, well, we'll link all that up, but no, I appreciate you coming on, man. And I'm looking forward to hearing future updates. Yeah. Thank you. Appreciate it.